So um, I, I've been asked to give you more of a kind of bird's eye overview of kind of tricks of the trade, really, in preparing grant applications. Uh, and it's primarily from a social care perspective I come from. So my, my intention here is to hope to, however, provide a more general uh, tricks of the trade in applying for um, grant applications, but almost interweave social care within that because not everybody here will be um, interested or applying for social care. So I didn't want to leave um, anybody out. So it's a more general overview, but with a particular social care focus. Uh, now, my role in the RDS, I'm a specialist social care advisor in the Northwest RDS, and I wear different hats with both NIHR. Uh, I'm involved with the School for Social Care Research and the local clinical research network with a specialist brief to promote social care research. I'm senior lecturer in social care at the University of Manchester and I've worked in social care actually all my professional life. So I'm well versed in social care and I hope to give you an overview of grant applications in general, but with a particular focus on social care as I'll describe as we go along. Some of my points are very general in terms of you know, what is a grant application? Sometimes people get a little bit confused about what a grant application is and what it is not. Uh, and as has been said previously, uh, particularly Fiona uh, mentioned this just, just now, um, you, you need to be very clear in your grant application, not just about the science, but about who your team are, what the research question is, as we learned very early, uh, and not assume that the grant panel um, knows what's in your head. Don't think that um, knowledge in your head and knowledge of the team, the grant panel um, somehow magically uh, know about that. You've got to describe it to them and particularly for social care research. If you're new to social care, that probably helps you in preparing a grant application for social care because you need to describe the setting that you're working in very well that non-specialists will understand. Not everybody in the grant panel will be specialists in the area that you've chosen um, for your research. Next slide, please. So I tried to put these top, top tips into sort of preparing, into sort of chunks really, preparing, writing, and then what happens afterwards. So I hope that's useful to you. So in preparing for, for your grant application, um, good preparation is really, really important, I think. And if you're not already, I, I would familiarise yourself with the whole NIHR infrastructure, some of which is, has been described um, today. So, so the RDS, the Research Design Service, the CRN, the Clinical Research Network, and all the costing um, uh, framework and advice that you can get. So there's, there's, um, you need to get to grips with the Accord guidance, as it's called, in costing research applications and what different types of costs in research are. And there's a little link there in the slide to that. So if you're not familiar at the moment with what all these um, words mean, RDS, CRN, Accord, etc., just get familiar with them. And the RDS can help here. Certainly in the Northwest, we they are, we like the RDS to be a signposter to other parts of the NIHR infrastructure. So always approach the RDS at an early stage, even if it's an idea stage. So if you've got an idea about social care, for example, you might be a bit confused about the setting and who the participants are, who the, who the staff members actually are. Um, the RDS can guide you to the CRN, for example, who increasingly now have a specialist role in promoting social care research. So the NIHR are there to help you, the infrastructure, they're, they're paid to help you. So, so use the RDS at an early stage. They can signpost you to other experts. Uh, next slide, please. So when, you, when you, you've prepared yourself, you, you're looking at the setting, uh, particularly if it's social care, you're getting used to the setting, reading, reading up on it, et cetera, working out who the staff members are, who are your users, i.e. Um, clients, patients uh, of, of the service. Um, and then you're writing the application with your research idea. Now, 
some of this advice here is based on mistakes I've made. So I'll be honest about that. I've had grant rejections too, as, as well as successes. And I've been on research panels also reviewing um, research applications. Uh, and the, the biggest piece of advice I think I can give you is actually writing the grant application almost conceptually how to think about it. Um, a grant application is not a scientific paper or a scientific report. The science is important, but really a grant application is, is a proposal for a research contract. Uh, so, so outline your idea, what it is very, very clearly early on. Uh, I would say in the second paragraph after a sort of background paragraph about what your research is intending to look at, state your idea there and what you're going to do in a short paragraph. And as has been said earlier, don't be afraid of repeating yourself afterwards later on. Um, most reviewers, in my experience, and certainly myself, have almost decided whether your grant application will tip over the balance to be funded, perhaps, potentially, in the first five or ten minutes of reading it. So you need to grab them very early on. Uh, particularly important in this is the plain English summary at, at the beginning. Um, there, there'll be a PPI reviewer that reads that and it's useful to get um, an external person or a PPI applicant to help you write the plain English summary. Don't, don't underestimate how hard that is. Um, don't dumb down, but, but be clear. Um, a good tip is to get a 12 year old if you have one to hand. I, I fortunately do, but if you just have one to hand or somebody else's um, and, and pass that plain English summary over them and ask them, do they understand what that's about? It's, it's, it's some research I'm doing. It's some science I'm doing. Do, do you know what that means? And if they don't understand it, it's probably not clear as a plain English summary. So avoid acronyms, acronym, uh, acronyms and, uh, et cetera, and, and long words, but don't dumb down. Get somebody else to read it before you um, submit it. Write clearly and succinctly. Um, again, as I said, a grant application is a particular thing. It's almost as if you're writing a job application, uh, stating who you are, what you've done previously, why, why you want this um, resource for your research study. It, it's not a scientific document as such, it includes science, but it's a proposal. So think of it in that way. Next slide, please. So again, in writing it, it's more than actually just the mechanics of writing it. So as has been said previously, I think it's good to see this as a, as a team approach. So get help, get get collaborators, get team members early on. Don't don't ask them, you know, as has been said two weeks in advance of of the submission. That will uh, that will really annoy um, co-investigators. Get a mentor if you're not experienced yet in grant application. Get somebody that's um, trod the path before and get their advice on on what their tips are and and pass um, drafts to them. Uh, a co, co PI status is a good way of, of doing that. So, and this is a little point in the first bullet point there about the academic world, which I'm sure if you're new to it or an early career researcher, you're kind of fighting, finding out already. Um, the, the academic world can be terribly um, status obsessed, and you, you might have to think that you have to ask for permission to prepare a grant application or you have a research idea and you have to go to somebody to say, um, can I do this? Is that all right? Uh, it can be terribly like that sometimes, particularly um, universities. So ask around yourself. Don't don't wait. Be proactive. Ask around for help yourself. And it's easier to apologize if you've done that wrong in somebody's mind in terms of internal politics of, of your workplace, etc. It's easier to apologize than ask for permission in the first place. So just go ahead and if you've got a good idea, go for it. Um, as I said, it's not all about the science. It's as much for the grant um, panel uh, about trust. It's can you be trusted to execute and complete this research? So build a correct team around you. And Fiona's had some really helpful tips, I thought, there about building a team, what to do, what not to do. Um, particularly in social care research, 
um, as it's it's kind of a new area for funding because there's been a lack of uh, capacity for so long in terms of research in social care. Um, in terms of a research application, a non-academic investigator is just as important as an academic investigator for, for particularly for social care. So get people involved that are social care managers, um, user groups, uh, practitioners, social workers, for example, to be part of your team. They'll have the specialist knowledge of the setting, uh, care home managers, for example. Uh, they'll be able to help you execute the research so you can concentrate on leading and, and planning. So get people around you. Um, write, write the application with specific responsibilities for specific um, applicants and be very clear about that particularly um, give one person responsibility for the um, PPIE, public and patient involvement and engagement. And it is good if that person is a user patient representative themselves. But don't be tokenistic about that, as has been said previously. Um, look around what who's the best person through advice or who you know already um, to um, execute the PPI aspect of, of your project. Next slide, please. Now, here's the really uh, important bit, and this is my last slide, uh, and I hope that's uh, within time. Um, afterwards, after you've done all that, you've, you've submitted your grant application, what happens next? Well, you, you get a decision. You often get review comments and you um, kind of retailer the, the application, uh, and then you get a decision, it's successful or not. So if, you, if it is successful um, and you get it right first time, even if that's by accident, um, congratulations, uh, have, a, have yourself a celebration because it is it's hard work applying for a grant. It takes a lot of time um, between other things that, that you're already doing. So have a celebration and, and prepare for the contract, basically. Um, but many applications do um, get knocked back first time. Um, certainly my, my first two applications got knocked back first time. Uh, try not to be disheartened. It is very disheartening and you feel a mixture of sort of anger and disappointment, etc. And it's uh, it's quite an emotional thing when you've put so much energy into it. But learn from the feedback if, if there is any feedback. Uh, often grant panels, they're wanting to be helpful. They're wanting to award uh, your grant, but they just want to be very specific in what you've not included or if, if the science or the team or the application in a sense has gone sort of off kilter in away from the research question so so learn from the feedback and if possible just recycle your application perhaps for a different funding stream or perhaps for a different funder uh, there are many certainly many different funding streams for nihr and particularly for social care all the funding streams mention that they include social care but in my experience uh, quite quite a few of them uh, I'm not really serious about that, in my opinion. I think they're giving a cursory sort of nod to social care, and it might be better if you do apply to certain funding streams to apply elsewhere if you get knocked back. But sometimes the reasons for un being unsuccessful are just a, a resource issue. So a grant panel will have, say, 20 applications in an afternoon to review, uh, and they'll only have finite resource, and sometimes you might just miss the boat. So the panel might say that if you're unsuccessful. So just learn from that, that it, it might be better submitting elsewhere or having a, a smaller uh, research application for a smaller amount of resource next time. Sometimes, though, uh, and this is a little bit uh, difficult to stomach sometimes, sometimes the decision is just in inexplicable. You're not really sure why they've rejected it. The, the feedback is like two lines uh, and you're just unsure, but you're not allowed to sort of seek uh, clarification. So I would just advise, for, just forget about it, move on, uh, have another idea, recycle the application somewhere else. Just don't don't take it personally, just, just move on and, and carry on. The last point really is just keep generating ideas and writing applications yourself. It, after the first few, it does become a bit of a way of life and you'll you'll be writing them in between other things and you'll get into the, the swing of it. And it does get easier as you go through because uh, uh, you've been through the process before. 
So just a last point, I'll finish now, Andy, if that's OK, if I'm in, in within time. A uh, little bit over, I think. Um, just a, a little point about social care specific research. So the, each RDS region will have a social care specific advisor or a social care interested uh, advisor. And the way you get hold of us is just through the the ordinary RDS channels to seek help initially, as, as Martin uh, mentioned right at the very beginning. So use the RDS contact address and email, etc. And if your application looks like it might be social care or in a social care setting, you will be um, forwarded to a social care advisor like myself to advise you further. So thanks for listening and hope that's useful.